The Bible tells us, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What does that mean? What does these words, we shall be saved by his life, mean? This is a promise, brothers and sisters, that many Christians and many Seventh-day Adventists have missed. We shall be saved by his life. You ask someone these days, why are you saved? Why do you hope? To have eternal life. He will tell you, because Jesus died for me on the cross. Hallelujah. And he took my sins away. And he paid my debt. Amen. Yes, that is good. That is true. But that's not why you're saved. That is not why you are saved. You're not saved because Jesus paid your debt. That's not why you are saved. And I hope, I pray that today through my talk, through the... 39 minutes that are left, I'll be able to elaborate what God has placed on my heart. And I hope, I trust, that it will give you hope. I find my place not merely to debate and to study theology, but to deal with those Christians who hate their Christian life because they can't make it. To deal with those seven-day Adventists who are starting to hate the Sabbath, to hate the spirit of prophecy because it is too much. Because they want to please God, but they fall and they say, because I fall, I am not saved, I am lost, I have no Christ, I have no hope of eternal salvation. That's what I feel, the burden that God has placed, that God has placed on my heart. And if there is anyone in here like that today, I want you to give ear. Give ear and listen. Think about it this way. Why did I say that we are not saved because Jesus died and paid the debt? Why am I saying that that is not enough? Some people might think, well, that's blasphemy. Just hear me out. Think about it this way. God created Adam. And I will illustrate it this way. God created Adam and he deposited in his bank account $1 million. God did not only create Adam innocent. God created Adam holy, righteous. He gave him his spirit and Adam was one with God. Adam wasn't just normal. Adam was up there. But we all know that Adam sinned. And Adam's sin did many things. Adam did not only lose the spirit that God gave him. Adam became guilty. Adam no longer became one with God. No longer remained one with God. He lost his innocence and he lost the spirit of God and he was no longer perfect. Hence Adam had two problems now and God has to deal with both problems. Number one, it's guilt. Adam is guilty. Adam is condemned by his sin and God has to deal with that. But there's another problem. Adam can no longer live a righteous life. Adam no longer possesses power to live a righteous life. Adam no longer possesses power to please God. And God has to deal with that also. Adam now has a legal problem. There is guilt. And he has a personal and a practical problem. There is a bad heart and a bad life. A legal problem that has to do with the record in heaven above and a personal and a practical problem that has to do with me now, today, on this planet. Can you see the difference? Are you following me? So when I ask you, why are you saved? What are you basing your eternal life, your hope of eternal life on? And you tell me because Jesus died on the cross and he paid my debt, you have not solved the problem. You only dealt with your legal issue. But that's not, what, that's not all what it takes to save you. 
There's more than that. We are reconciled to God through the death of his son. But we are saved by his life.